Friends, welcome back to the channel. For those who don't know me, my name is Rick. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can make a calendar table flexible for any language that you need to use. As you probably know, most models in Power BI need a calendar so you can easily apply time intelligence and make sure you can filter on specific periods. I have a video about that. That's not what this one is about. But those calendars, you might sometimes want to show that in English, Spanish, Dutch, depending on your target audience. And in this video, I'm going to just show you how to make it flexible so that the column names actually show in the required language, easy enough, but also that the column values that you will find in the columns will also reflect that language. And it's not as complex as it sounds, but as soon as you know, you might be able to apply it yourself. So let's have a look how it works. So let's have a quick look. The first thing you might notice is if we look at the columns here, then for example, month name is now reflected in the English language. And uh, of course, this is one of those parts where you're like, if I want to show this in a different calendar language, then this is one of the columns we need to change. The same for the month name short. And at some point here, you might even find the day names like over here in the back. Friday, Saturday, of course, those are different as well, depending on the language. Okay, so let's see how we can change that. The key to make sure that this works is that we have a culture code that we can change, but we don't wanna to have to fill that in by hand. It will be good if it's flexible. So let's start out by creating a parameter. So you can go to manage parameters in the home tab, click on new parameter, and let's call this parameter calendar language. Then we can say this is text and we want to provide a list of values. And out here, you just provide all the languages that you need. In our case, we want English and Dutch is Netherlands in that language. Let me remove this one. Default value is English. And then we can simply press um, a current value English as well. And we're good to go. So this already creates the parameter that we need. Okay, we have this in place now. Now let's start at the beginning with the first column that needs to be flexible. So this month year column here, it shows a short version of the month, uh, the month name. And even this short version might be different depending on the language. So the current language that shows is based on your system language. And it really depends where this query is refreshed for what value will show up here. But you can enforce a language with the third argument of data text. So you can write a comma. If I change this to en-en, you're going to find that it stays the same right now. So no changes yet, but it at least means the language will always be English. If I change this one to the Dutch language, nl nl, then of course it's going to refresh. And first of all, you'll see that it's not capitalized anymore. So in the Dutch language, we have lower letters for months. And you see that March, for example, is MRT. So this forces that language that you need. And this we're going to have to do for multiple columns that actually need to be flexible. So that is also for, for example, month name. But before we get there, we're going to have to change it around till again. Otherwise, I want this value to be flexible depending on the calendar language chosen in our parameter. OK. Now, if you only have like two or three languages, you might just write an if statement in the beginning here. Not in every step that you want to change, but let's say that we want to make a separate step here. So after end date, we could have a separate step, clicking on FX. And I might be able to write here, if calendar language is equal to English, then return the value English, English, else return NL, NL. And with this in place, this step will return us our culture. Press OK. Now, this list of dates is now ruined because it's now referencing culture. So we need to fix this again to reference the end date. That was just a side effect from adding this step. But with this, things should be working. Yes, and everything is now still in place. OK, so you first create a parameter. Then you actually make an if statement for the culture that you need. And this culture you can incorporate in the relevant uh, items, uh, the relevant date formulas. So out here, the first one that we made says date to text. And the optional argument here, we can replace by the word culture. And the word culture was found here in this, uh, in this list. So it's actually the value out there. Great. 
Now, if we continue, there's more columns that need this. So also the date month name, and there's a few more, but let me just slowly fast forward this so you see the results. Okay, we're good to go. So I changed these cultures, and this means that if I change this one again to Dutch, and I go back to the calendar, and we go, for example, back to the day, uh, the day names, uh, you'll find that the day names are now showing Zaterdag, Zondag. The day name short is also in a short way, in a similar fashion for the months that we just looked at. Okay, so this should make it flexible enough. However, perhaps you have a multitude of languages and you have other values that you also need dependent on the language. So what we did right here for the culture, it might not be flexible enough for you. I'm going to show you a, a quick way on how you can make this more flexible and make it easier to collect your data. And to do that, what you can simply do is enter a table and go to the Home tab, click on Enter Data. And I'm going to switch to this Excel and I have this small culture code table and we just copy paste it in here. And here I provide the language and the culture codes that belong to the language. So let me put this right here. So the table that is created here is based on the compressed code in this formula bar right there. You don't need to generate this yourself, but it's automatically done when you copy paste your data from an Excel into the enter data interface. But you can copy this code here and actually enter it right here in our calendar. So maybe just before this culture step, it could be good that we... Um, actually, I'm going to do it after the culture step here. I'm going to click on FX. I'm going to copy and paste this code that we just had equals. Or am I going to... Yes, yes. Equals. That's it. And while it's rendering, um, it's good to know that it will render the result here. And we can call this like the culture table. And I was thinking I could now move it backwards. Let's see if this doesn't change any of the references. So our list dates should still reference and date. And just a quick look in the advanced edit there. So we had a few things around here, dated text, and this one still references culture. So everything is well, great. Now, instead of referencing culture by this if statement, we can also see if we can look it up in the culture table that we have right here. So the first step is finding on which of the rows are selected languages. And once we know that row, we can return the right culture value by its index position in the table. How do we do that? So we can first have a look, where do we find the language in that table? And you can write list position of. Then we're going to look in the culture table. And there is a column called language. And we want to look for the language. Let's say we want to look for Dutch, for example, Netherlands. The result of this point is that it will look on which of the rows the Dutch language is now and it returns the row index. So a row index of one means it's on, it's on the second line. And instead of looking for this one hard-coded, we can again put the parameter in there, which says calendar language. Here we go. And by doing this, the row index will be calculated. So this shouldn't change at the, at the point. And now what we can do with this, let's copy it. And if we want to return the right, uh, the right culture code, we can do the following. So after I've copied this, I can reference the culture table. And in the culture table, there is something called culture code. And if we want the first row index, we can do something like this. So it's between curly brackets and it returns the language you want. But instead of hard coding this part, we're going to remove the one and we're going to paste the code that we just created. So it dynamically looks for the right code here, NL, NL. And now if we switch this one from uh, Dutch to English, we can go back to that culture code and it actually shows English. Okay, so in that way, you can make it super flexible and make it easy to expand the table for different languages as well. So if you want to, you could even say, I want to add a language like Spanish. 
And after you add Spanish, you could just write something like SS and it will be included here. The only place you'll still have to include it is then in your parameter. Okay, I'm gonna cancel this. So this is the first step to change the column values in your table. Besides the column values, it's also important to make sure the names reflect the language that you have. So if we wanna do this in Dutch, even if the, the default values look uh, like Dutch, it wouldn't be so good if it said month name because in your report, you'd have to change everything. Now for this, we're gonna use a similar trick uh, because we don't wanna do this all by hand. If you wanna do this by hand, this is what happens. I'm gonna change the word jaar by jaar. And maybe this one is gonna be JJJMM. And in the formula bar up here, What's going to happen is there's going to be pairs of values with the old value and new value. And for each of the column that has the shell. And this of course is not very dynamic if you want to change it to multiple languages. Look at, imagine changing 29 columns that we have currently and changing that to all the languages. So that's not the way to go. Instead, what we could try and do is make sure we have a translation table for this as well. And we can use the part here as a template. And I already created a table with this translation table. So I can go to table and we could say, I want to replace all of these values. And notice what I did. I made the first column called English and the second one called Dutch. So my default calendar is made in English and any other language we need to put here with the same name as I have provided in my parameter because our query will look at that when we select something. Okay, so here we have the table. And just like the other time, we can again copy paste the code. We go to our calendar right there. And now instead of this culture here, let me see. So we have culture, I can add a new step. And now I'm going to place this translation table here. And the good thing is we can all edit this in Power BI. You don't need to be in Excel or anything. So in the future, you wanna change anything, you just click on the wheel icon and all the logic just remains in Power BI. Let's see, it's taking a little bit of time to create it, it seems. So we call this one here, translation table. And I check if this one is still referencing the right ones. Okay, the only downside now is that some of the, the references are now referencing the translation table instead of the culture. So I'll need to change that again. That's the only downside. So we need to change this one to culture and this one and this one here. And then down here for the day, the day name is also the culture code and the culture code. And now we can just have a quick double check if that all worked out. And I think we should be good to go now. Great. Okay, so for our last step, so we now have our translation table in place with the original column and uh, the, the possible values you wanna translate it to. So let's see. So I just clicked on the last step here. And when you're renaming, you're gonna find that the table rename columns requires a list containing pairs of lists. Now this will be very inconvenient to write manually, but we can use a function for this called list zip. Okay, so let's move this to the next line. You could write list zip. And as a first argument, you need to reference the old column values. And for us, that's the English values where we started with. So we can say translation table and the column was called English. So only referencing the column name like this part, make sure that we get a list of all the items in the column. The next thing we want to do is dynamically reference the column name with the, the desired language you want to be at. And to do that, like it would be fun if we could do this. You write translation table and instead of hard coding a column, we would write calendar language and if you're a little naive, you might think it works because this calendar language would be the parameter here. But actually when you click on find, it's going to tell you there is no column that is called calendar language. And we also need a right bracket here to close it. So here the language says that it's not existing in the table. So this, uh, the formatting in this way, it just doesn't work. 
To reference a column dynamically, what you can do instead is use the table column function. And in the table column function, the first argument requires you to give the name of the table, and the second one can take the column name. So you can write translation table, and here I write calendar language, which is the name of either English or Dutch, Engels of Netherlands. And with that, because our column names are named identical to the selected language in the parameter, we should be able to get the right values. Okay, so we can do this. And the bottom one, let's press OK. So at this point, everything is still the same because English to English just remains English. But what happens if we change this one to the Dutch language? Now, if we look at our last step, we now find that all of these items are renamed to the values that I provided in the translation table. So that's great. So we're almost there, but I just want to show a pitfall here. So the previous, the last column that I added here in the end is called is weekday. And that is weekday is also provided in the translation table. So there's something in the bottom here is weekday in Dutch is called is werkdag. Well, let me show you a, a pitfall here because at the moment that I delete one of the, the columns, but it's still existing in the translation table, you'll find that this renaming thing, uh, the remaining step gives you a, an error because the column isn't found. Now, you might very well be knowing and know what you do, but if this calendar is out with people that are less experienced, they might not understand why this happens. So what I recommend is to give the, the, the second argument of table rename columns, just write a comma, and you can write something that says missing fields and you can say that they can ignore it. Uh, missing fields ignore. Well, let me see, list tip. So this one is closed, missing fields. Ah, there we go, missing field ignore. And by adding the missing field ignore part, you see that your query just remains working and robust even if in the future you decide to delete some columns. And of course, for you, for your maintenance, if in the future you want different names, the only thing you do is you go to translation table, you click on the settings, and you change the names that you have here. And if you add a new language, you just mention the language right there with all of the relevant names. And you also go to your parameter and click on manage parameter here. And with that, you can just expand it with the right name, the same as in your translation table, and you should be able to add your languages easy like that. And this one, we don't need. So in summary, if you wanna make your calendar flexible, the two things you need to change is you need to make sure the column values are with the right language, and you also need to rename all your items. One of the big pitfalls though is, if you have already built your model and you're gonna change the column names, this might actually ruin the measures that use the column names, and it can also ruin relationships that you have. Because at this point, you might have a relationship with a column called date, and if you change the name of that language, your relationships might break and you have to also remake those. So these changes that I'm providing here, those are best made before you employ, deploy a model and before you're actually already in the BI solution. Um, you could of course do it later, but that's gonna just give you these issues that you should be aware of. Cool. Well, I hope this was valuable. If you learned something new, I'd appreciate a comment or, or a like. And if there's anything that I missed or suggestions, let me know. And with that, I hope to see you in the next video.